and blessings. My name is Leah Penniman, co-director and farm manager at Soulfire Farm. Today we will learn some of the preparations for medicinal herbs, namely tinctures, teas, and oils. Our people's relationship with plant medicine extends even before our first written account in 1500 BCE on the Ebers Papyrus on which ancient Egyptians listed the recipes for over 850 herbal medicines. Our knowledge of plants traveled with us in the bowels of slave ships and was kept alive in the root and conjure work of the Black American South in Harriet Tubman's deft use of wild plants to keep her underground railroad passengers healthy and in the natural pharmacies of Orisha worshipers. My name is Antonia Estela Perez Rojas, founder of Urban Cura, an organization committed to reskilling and reconnecting to the wisdom and powers of plants, land, and healing. Before making medicine, it is important to get to know the plant, identify them correctly, and build a relationship with the land you are on. I've been taught by my parents, elders, and mentors to always ask for permission and always bring an offering when you are entering into a new space, home, or territory. Spending time with the plant will ensure that you get to know the plant real well. I like comparing getting to know a plant like getting to know a person. The name is just the beginning. Observe from above, down low, ask for consent before you touch the plant, and only taste if you are guided by someone who knows the plant. Using our senses provides information on the plant's gifts. If you decide to harvest a plant, take a moment to ask yourself, why, for whom, when, and how will I process this medicine? This will support in not over-harvesting and honoring the harvest. If possible, harvest plants that are abundantly growing in a community garden or farm and refrain from wild foraging especially native and endangered plants. There are many plants that are considered weeds that are incredible medicinals. Lastly, recognize and give gratitude for this plant that is supporting you and your community's health, protection, and resilience. Harvesting herbs is a continuous process rather than a one-time annual event. Most herbs grow strongly enough to offer plenty of regrowth for repeat picking. Harvest in the morning on a sunny day to maximize the essential oil content of the plants. Wait until any dew has evaporated. Use sharp scissors to harvest rather than pulling the plant with bare hands as this prevents disease and damage. Leaves are best picked before they come into flower. Flowers should be cut soon after they open and not left to drop their petals. Seeds are harvested once ripe, but before they drop and disperse. Roots and rhizomes are best collected during their dormant period in autumn or winter. Leave at least 25% of the root to allow the plant to regenerate. Herbs should never be left in heaps waiting to be processed as deterioration sets in quickly. Wipe rather than wash foliage clean. Wash the roots and rhizomes in cold water and cut into pieces before processing. Air drying herbs is the simplest method of preservation. Harvest bunches of leafy herbs and strip the leaves off of the bottom inch of the stem for banding. Hang the bunches by the bands in a dry, well-ventilated place out of direct sunlight. In dusty and urban areas, it is best to cover the bunches with a paper bag to keep the herbs clean. Herbs can also be laid out on trays or screens for drying. We like to place those trays in a car to speed the drying process. Aim to have the drying complete in four to seven days so that volatile oils are not lost. Once leaves and flowers are crackly dry, they can be stripped off the stem by hand and stored in paper bags or glass containers in a dark, dry place. The ideal drying temperature for leaves and flowers is 80 to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Roots and tubers require higher temperatures to dry, 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also cut them into small pieces and dry them in the oven. Once your plant has dried, you may want to garble them. Garbling is when you separate the different plant parts, such as stems, leaves, and flowers, in order to keep the most potent part of the plant. There are different ways of garbling. One is to do it by hand. That is a very tedious job that can take hours. Another example is to garble the plant material over a screen and allow the plant material to fall through the screen into a bucket. More simple herbs to garble are mints that easily come off the stem and take up more surface area. 
With the stems that are left over, you can steep them in a bath or burn them as essence if they are aromatic plants. Store your dry plant material in a glass jar, label and keep in a dark space to preserve the plant's potency. Glycerates and tinctures are a way of preserving the plant's medicine, especially for the winter months when we may not have access to fresh plants. They are also a practical way of intaking the medicinal properties and are convenient to transport. Glycerites are made using vegetable glycerin and is a great choice for children, elders, and folks who don't intake alcohol. Tinctures are made using 40 to 50% alcohol, such as vodka, rum, or brandy. You can make glycerites and tinctures with either dry or fresh herbs. For both glycerites and alcohol tinctures, we will use the same folk method. You will need fresh plant material, cutting board, knife, or mortar and pestle. First, chop the fresh plant material to expose surface area and soften the cell wall. Now fill the glass jar about two thirds of the way full. Pour alcohol or glycerin over the plant material. Note that if you are working with dry plant material, you will only fill the jar halfway. Throughout this whole process, keep it in your heart and mind, your intentions for this medicine as that is also being infused. Label the jar with the date, plant name, where you harvested, moon phase, and any intentions you want to name. For the first two weeks, shake the jar every day or when you remember, store in a dark and cool place. The tincture and glycerite are ready to strain in four to six weeks. However, you can leave the plant material in the menstruum until you are ready. Glycerites are shelf stable for up to two years while tinctures can last three years or more. To strain, you will need a funnel, cheesecloth, or fine strainer, tincture bottle, and label. You can intake the glycerite or tincture by diluting 15 to 30 drops in water or tea or straight into your mouth. The frequency of the intake will depend on your health needs. We encourage you to continue your learning and seek support from a clinical herbalist. Infusing an herb in oil dissolves its fat-soluble constituents. To make a hot infused oil, combine 250 grams of dried or 500 grams of fresh herb with 750 milliliters of olive oil or sunflower oil. In this case, we're using calendula and comfrey. Stir the chopped herb and oil together in a glass bowl and double boil over a saucepan of water for two to three hours or in a slow cooker for two to three hours. Do not put the oil directly over the heat or it will burn. Trust me, I've made that mistake. Allow the mixture to cool and strain through a cheesecloth. Similarly, cold infused oils are made by covering fresh or dried herbs with olive oil in a clear glass jar. Place the jar on a sunny windowsill for two to six weeks, then strain through cheesecloth. Store the infused oils in dark glass bottles. Oils can be rubbed on the skin three or more times per day to relieve pain and promote healing. Combining infused oils with solid fats creates a salve that can be applied to the lips or skin for healing and pain relief. Use a double boiler to melt the infused oil together with a beeswax in four to one oil to beeswax ratio. Alternatively, use shea butter or coconut oil instead of beeswax at a one to one shea butter to infused oil ratio. Once melted, you can add vitamin E or rosemary oil to increase the shelf life and prevent rancidity as well as essential oils for their aromatic gifts. Pour the mixture into small jars with lids and set aside to cool. Store in a dark place. Sobs can be rubbed on the skin three or more times per day. Okay. Teas. This is my favorite way to intake plant medicine and incredibly effective at extracting. Water is life. A tea is a quick steep, about 10 to 15 minutes, using one cup of water to one tablespoon of loose herb. An infusion is a longer steep, usually four to 24 hours, using four cups of water to two tablespoons of herb. You can use herbs that have a high mineral and vitamin content. The longer the steep, the more potent and nutritive. Some examples of herbs that you may want to use are nettles, oat straw, red clover, tulsi, and raspberry leaf. For both teas and infusions, Boil hot water and pour over the herbs. Once your infusion is ready, you can drink throughout the day.
Any extra infusion you can place into the fridge for up to three days. A decoction is when you are working with tough plant materials such as roots, seeds, bark, mushrooms. Place three tablespoons of plant material in a pot and pour four cups of water and allow it to simmer for about 20 to 40 minutes. Then strain the plant material. Decoctions can last up to a week in the fridge or you can preserve with honey and make an herbal syrup. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope your relationship with plant friends is deep and true.